Thanks for joining me today for part two of generic horse-drawn wagon in O scale. Here are some uh, early attempts at making a horse-drawn wagon. Uh, this one has my attempt at a fifth wheel and this one is a more conventional sand beam sort of suspension. We uh, worked on the rear suspension in part one and today we're going to work on the front suspension in part two. I should uh, make note that the materials I'm using for this build is strip basswood, 1 16th by 1 16th square profile and 1 16th by 1 8th profile. This material is nice for a medium duty wagon, although it's a little bit fine, I'm a little bit clumsy. Previous builds have used styrene. Here's a front suspension I made, and I believe this one is made out of 80,000th square styrene. I've used uh, 100 for heavy duty wagons and 60,000 square for finer wagons. The styrene is uh, a lot more robust, but uh, it does take uh, a little bit of finesse to get some of the moving parts working. I've also become aware that some of the terminology I used in the previous video was a little off, a little different. I'm going to use uh, a little different terminology this time and I'll let you know where those changes are. Let's put our wood pieces back together for what we need today. We're going to need three pieces of wood that are cut to five foot length for our medium duty. We're going to need two pieces that are cut to seven foot. I'm going to have to find that other one. We're also going to have uh, a longer piece at 14 and a longer piece at 12. I ended up cutting another seven foot section. Let's begin the, the job. I've uh, put a piece of uh, painter's tape upside down so the adhesive side is up and I've drawn a straight line down the middle that represents the uh, draw bar of our wagon and it has a square line at the end of it and that represents where our axle is going to go. The first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, make a mark on that square line about one foot out from the midline and this is again going to represent where we want the hound or the diagonal piece to go on the on the wagon on the rear axle so marking my center line I'm going to come out one foot and one foot the next thing we need to do is we need to take the hounds for the front which are the seven foot long sections and we need to make a mark five foot back from one end. Remember on the rear suspension our hounds were five feet long. We still want to have that same five foot mark on this but we need two feet of the hound to project beyond the front axle. So I'll just make a little bit a little mark here a little indentation with my exacto chisel for my five foot mark. And then, like the rear suspension, what we want to do is we want to have the inside edge of the hound at the five foot mark, right on the axle mark at its one foot out from midline. So I'll put that mark on the template. And then I want to just have the front end, inside edge, touch the midline at that point. Let's do the same for the opposite side. So the five foot back mark on the hound will be at the one foot out mark from center line and it will just touch on the center line the other hound. Now we're going to make the part of the suspension where the front hounds attach to the drop tongue. And I called that a uh, hitch bar before, but it, some people call it a, a drop tongue. So what we're going to do is we're going to position the 
drop tongue on the midline, having it go over the front edges of the hound, and then we're going to make a diagonal cut, the width of the drop bar. So I'll gently cut on this side of the drop hound, of the drop tongue, and the other side. Good. I'll remove the drop tongue. And we now have two marks in, or partial cuts in our front hounds. I'll move that section that's been removed. There we go. I'll just do a test fit, make sure that that fits in there nicely. It does, it's not too wide. If the edges needed dressed up a little bit, just a little file and you can take care of that. The first thing we're gonna do here is a divergence away from what we did on the rear. And that is we're now gonna take our styrene plastic and we're going to make a reach plate. I called this a receiver on the uh, rear suspension. It's more accurately a reach plate. This might be uh, have another name on the front suspension, but I'm gonna to continue to call it the reach plate today. My styrene is 20 thousandths thick. It's about 12 scale inches wide. The width that I cut this isn't really important, but I need to have two pieces before we're done today. I'll cut both of those now. Use what you have around. It'll work just fine. Here comes the difference. On the rear suspension, we wanted the reach plate right out at the front tip of the hounds. On the front suspension, we want the front of the reach plate to be just at that point where our trimmed notch goes back out to the full width of the hound. So I'll put that on here and we'll let that finish securing. We'll trim that, we'll turn that over and we'll trim off the spare later. The reason you want this uh, reach plate so far back is that the drop tongue needs to be free to move up and down. And if the reach plate was farther forward, it would hold that drop tongue and wouldn't let it go up and down. Again, like the rear axle, we want to take our axle beam and we want to put it across the hounds. Some recent videos I've watched, this rear axle beam is also called an axle cap. So just so you have that, we know that we want it out here at the five foot mark. If you really wanted to make sure it was on center, go ahead and mark the center of, of your beam. I did that earlier. I'm just gonna confirm that I have a mark there at two and a half feet. It's not very visible. So five foot cross member or axle cap or axle beam, put a little mark at halfway. I'm going to put my adhesive right at the five foot mark. Placing it on the hounds at five feet. Making sure my center line is centered. Give it a little press to activate the ACC. There we go. There's one other piece we're going to need while we have this upside down. And this is where we're going to use a little bit smaller dimensional material if you want. You can still make this your original thickness of all your other material. But I'm going to use this 16 1 16th by 1 16th material. And what we want on the normal 
rear or front suspension, there is a sway bar that is mortised and tenoned into the end of the hounds. Uh, in our construction, I want to make this a little easier. What I want to do is I just want to have, I want to put it just at the end of the hound. So just a little bit of adhesive. Cut this to approximate length. and position it on the rear of the hound. The draw bar coming from the rear suspension, also called the reach bar, is going to slide through there when we get the construction done. And that keeps the front suspension from bobbing up and down. Let's give this a chance to harden up and we'll be right back. With the project glue now dry, I'm gonna turn the front suspension over and what I'm gonna do is trim off the excess plastic outside of the hounds on the reach plate. This is now in the orientation that up is in fact up. So we're looking at the top of the suspension. Let's go ahead and put the other parts in. I wanna put in the other reach plate. Again, the front edge needs to be back a little bit away from the front edge of the hound so that we can have room for our drop tongue to go up and down. The next five foot section we want to have, some of the references I've seen call this the uh, sand beam. And this is in a construction that doesn't have a true fifth wheel. It's just got a kingpin and some uh, metal plates on top of the beams. So again, I'll just uh, get this centered directly above the axle beam or axle cap. I have another piece of the small dimensional material and I'm going to call this the uh, a sway bar, but it has another name when it's on the top. Most of the, tra the wagons that I've seen, the other sway bar is not over the um, sway bar that's on the bottom. It's a little bit forward of that. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it a little bit forward on ours. So there we are. We have all the elements of the suspension there. Let's go ahead and give this just a minute to cure or dry. With the cement dry, we want to just turn the construct back over. We want to trim off the excess styrene on the reach plate. Turn it back over. We now want to go up to that sandbar or the cross member element that's on the top side and we want to mark halfway and we're going to drill a hole. This hole is going to become the hole for the kingpin. In other words, the place that uh, the, the front suspension swivels around when it turns. And we want to choose a drill bit that's equal to this uh, size of wire that you're going to use for your kingpin. I want to, we want to drill it all the way through the sand beam and the axle beam. The next thing we need to do is we need to get our buffer beam and
drill a kingpin hole in it at halfway. There we go. And then we need to make a drawbar pin, or a king pin. I'm just gonna make mine out of soft brass. I'm just gonna take my fine needle nose pliers, bend a 90 degree bend in the, in the wire. I'll stack my components. I'll hold the kingpin upside down, judge for height, and give it a little cut. My kingpin will go down through the buffer beam, the sand beam, and the axle beam, and that creates the pivot point. <coughs> for the front part of the wagon bed carrying system. We've got some other things to do here, so let's go ahead and take that kingpin out. The other thing that we need to do, and I didn't do this on the, the previous rear suspension. I'll have to go back and do that later. We need to put some upward elements and they're they're cleats and they're going to hold the they're going to hold the the wagon bed in place <clears throat> so i'm going to make the extreme width of my wagon bed uh i think i'll make it Oh, four and a half feet. So what I'll do is I'll come a quarter foot inside the outside edge. I'm gonna make a small hole. Add a quarter feet inside each edge. And then what I want to do, I'm just going to use a little bit of brass wire. The actual cleats for the bed were made out of uh, mortise and tenon wood pegs. I can't make that fine enough that it works for me. So I'm going to just put in this brass rod and have it stand in for that component. I'll use super glue to put it in. Let's give that just a minute to harden before I snip it off. I'll do the other side. These cleats, I don't know the exact measurement, but they appear to be about nine inches tall, six, six to nine inches tall. And again, because this is a generic wagon, we can make ours whatever we want. Brass rod in place. As I look at this, just as an aesthetic measurement, I think, oh, let's, let's do the height of, let's do the height of those axle beam and dust beam. We'll just cut it there. The other side. I will go back and do this to the rear suspension. So, there we are. We finished the front suspension. for this generic wagon in O scale. There are some things we still need to do 
but we'll do it in association with making the drop tongue and putting the wheels on. Here are the pieces after they've been sent to the paint shop. Again, I've used kind of a burgundy red on mine. Uh, some companies, International Harvester, McCormick, used reds. John Deere might have used yellow. I thank you for joining me for this part two on generic horse-drawn wagon and O-scale front suspension. Please join me for part three, the drop tongue and hitching setup.